Hello, beloved viewers of Bible Stories. Welcome back to another enlightening journey into the profound world of Bible Stories. Today, we embark on a captivating exploration of the multifaceted realm of heaven, its mysteries, conflicts, and the divine promises that await. As we delve into the sacred scriptures, let's unravel the layers of this celestial tapestry and glean insights that resonate with the very essence of our faith. So grab your metaphorical passports as we embark on a spiritual pilgrimage together. What are your thoughts on the concept of heaven? Do you subscribe to the belief in its existence? If so, do you envision it as a realm filled with ethereal light and celestial music where choirs worship God amidst dazzling beauty and intricate architecture? Can you imagine opulent displays of gold and silver adorned with countless gemstones? While these notions hold some truth, they may not paint the complete picture. Alternatively, you might perceive heaven as the inner surface of an immense concave dome spanning the entire earth. As the dome's edge nears the horizon, it may seem to fall short, but in reality, it consistently blankets the land below. Virtually all earth's inhabitants harbor some conception of heaven. Considering the vast possibilities it's crucial to recognize the various terms employed to describe heaven. The singular noun, heaven, underscores its global unity, while other expressions hint at diverse aspects or sections. For instance, terms like heavens or celestial places imply an array of distinct locations collectively identified as heaven, possibly dedicated at different times to various beings and activities. In 2 Corinthians 12, 2-4, Paul recounts, I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. This passage suggests the existence of three heavens, one immediately above the other, the highest termed the third heaven by Paul is described as the abode of paradise and God, the holiest place in the universe. Such passages associate heaven with purity and holiness, where spoken words are so sacred they cannot be uttered outside of paradise. The term paradise, derived from the Greek word for garden, signifies God's heavenly garden, the ultimate destination for repentant sinners who persevere in the life of faith. On the cross, Jesus assured the repentant thief of their shared presence in paradise that day, stating, Truly, I say to you today, you shall be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43 A widespread perception of heaven exists among Earth's inhabitants. The book of Revelation introduces an area called the half of heaven or the middle of heaven. This appears to describe a sizable area where diverse beings come and go. Several verses mention powerful beings proclaiming from the middle of heaven. And I looked and heard an angel flying in the middle of heaven, literally in the middle of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. Revelation 8.13 Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, literally in the middle of heaven, who had the eternal gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. Revelation 14.6 Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the middle of heaven, literally, in the middle of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Revelation 19, 17. The Greek term for middle of heaven is mesuranema, precisely denoting the middle heaven, possibly the second heaven. Consequently, the visible heaven, perceptible to our natural sight, may be considered the first heaven. All Earth's inhabitants are somewhat familiar with this heaven, and its inhabitants are they angels. Angels, derived from the Greek angelos meaning messenger, 
are considered heavenly messengers sent by God. Despite their primary role, not all angels are messengers. They serve various functions and are sent by God for his purposes. Scripture is also acknowledge evil angels dispatched by Satan, leading to conflicts as depicted in the book of Daniel. This undeniable reality reveals that our world, as presently known, is a stage of conflict, extending beyond earth to influence heavenly occurrences. God-sent angels have three main roles, messengers, protectors, referred to as guardian angels, and warrior angels engaged in conflicts with opposing forces. While many envision heaven as a realm of uninterrupted peace, elegance, and worship, Likely true for the third heaven, it may not apply to the first and second heavens. Certain scriptures depict ongoing conflicts in the second heaven, where opposing angels, some serving God and others Satan, engage in celestial battles. Satan utilizes this realm to launch slanderous accusations against Earth's Christians who serve the Lord. Revelation 12.10 declares, And I heard a loud voice in heaven, saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. This verse portrays Satan as the constant accuser of believers. While predicting Satan's expulsion from heaven, it indicates his continued presence, filling the air with malicious accusations against God's people. A warning in Revelation 12 for 12 foresees the consequences on earth when Satan is expelled. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath because he knows that his time is short. These verses anticipate a period when Satan, having limited time, unleashes his wrath on earth. Since these events are yet to unfold, a realistic understanding of Satan's current activities is essential. Contrary to common belief, Satan isn't confined to hell. Revelation 23, 3 specifies that Satan freely roams the universe, with hell ruled by satanic princes named Death and Hades. Job 1.6 and 7 affirm Satan's earthly presence moving to and fro on the earth as portrayed in Revelation 23. The primary distinction between earth and heaven is earth's corruption by sin, while heaven remains untainted by sin. God, the glory of heaven, entrusted earth to humanity for care and enjoyment. Yet Adam and Eve's disobedience severed their communion with God, leading to sin's inheritance by all generations. The Bible acknowledges Earth's corruption in Genesis 6.12, stating, And God saw that the Earth was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the Earth. Isaiah 24.5 and 6 describe Earth's defilement due to human transgressions, portraying it as tainted by sin, akin to a debilitating disease. Sin distorts, devastates, and divides, contrasting with the pristine glory of heaven. Psalm 19.1 declares, The heavens declare the glory of God. And Isaiah 66.1 states, Heaven is my throne. God, being holy and sinless, cannot tolerate a sin. Habakkuk 113 emphasizes God's pure eyes that cannot approve evil. However, God's immense love devised a solution, crucifying sin on the cross through Christ's blood. Jesus, bridging the gap between heaven and earth, provides redemption from sin's penalty, acknowledging human sinfulness. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 underscores salvation through God's grace, unearned by individual works. Jesus' descent from heavenly glory to earth signifies a divine plan for eternal salvation. Descriptions of heaven in Revelation offer glimpses of its splendor using analogies like streets of gold and transparent glass to convey a celestial transformation revealing heavenly glory. In summary, reflections on heaven prompt a profound understanding of its diverse aspects, emphasizing purity, conflict, and divine intervention. 
Balancing conceptual and biblical perspectives enriches comprehension of this celestial realm. As believers anticipate heaven, patience is crucial, recognizing that only God fully comprehends its wonders. The promise of a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom awaits those whose hope is in heaven, as depicted in 2 Peter 1.1. 1, 1. In heaven, believers will witness the Savior's glory, falling at His feet in joyful praise. Let us pray for a deep awakening of the Holy Spirit within us, as Jesus promised the Helper who would teach and guide. Seeking clarity from the light of the Holy Father, we entrust our mental rest and stability to God's love. Through challenges and trials, may the Holy Spirit strengthen us, fostering a Christ-like mind and authentic discipleship. Prayers extend to humanity's salvation, seeking God's light to unite in faith, hope, and love. As we draw the curtains on this captivating episode, we've traversed the heavenly realms through the lens of biblical narratives. The stories we've encountered remind us of the purity and conflict that coexist in this divine space. While our human minds may only grasp fragments of its splendor, the promises of a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom fill our hearts with hope. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey into the intricacies of heaven. May these narratives inspire and deepen your understanding of the spiritual truths woven into the fabric of the Bible. Until our next exploration, may you find peace in the eternal promises of God. Stay blessed.